Hi, my name is Kavita Sharma. If you are watching this video, that means you are looking to pass the PMP exam in 2023. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through what is changing in the PMP exam, the content you should prefer, the kind of questions you can expect in the PMP exam, what is changing, what were the kind of questions which used to come before, and what are the questions which you can see now. So let's get started and see what's happening. So a lot of people come and ask me, um, should I refer PM Box 6 or PM Box 7? Are these the material which are going to help you pass the PMP exam? Let's talk about that as well in this particular video. Thank you. Let's get started. So before I begin talking about the exam, let's talk about what is the PMP exam all about. The PMP exam is on demand online exam. What it means is whenever you are ready, you can give the exam from your home or from a center. It is controlled. The PMI controls the certification. So check PMI.org and you're going to find there are different certifications like PMP, CAPM, Disciplined Agile. All those certification and the standards are controlled by PMI. Um, the questions which you're going to see in the PMP exam, these questions are typically um, objective questions there are not you don't have to write answers what you need to do is there are i'm going to talk about the question type um, however let's understand there are 180 questions which you have to attempt in 230 minutes there is an optional break of 10 minutes for you um, and two breaks which you're going to get so i believe what so if you have 180 questions um, there are three sections which you're going to get. So A would have 60 questions, B would have 60, and C would have 60 questions. Here you're going to get an optional break. Here you're going to get optional break of 10 minutes. The total uh, question, the total uh, duration for doing these questions is 230 minutes minus the 10 minutes of break. The kind of questions you're going to see are from three domains. So let's see what are those. Um, the domains or the kind of questions you're going to see is from people. How do you manage people? Um, what would you do to enable people? Things like that. Um, how would you communicate? Um, so these are 42% of the question, which means if the total questions are 180 questions, you're going to get somewhere around 76 questions from people domain. Process would contribute to 50% of the questions, so 90 questions you're going to see in the PMP exam. Business involvement is 8%. What is business involvement? How do you see changes? Why a project would take place? Um, what are different enterprise environmental factor and things like that. Process would be how do you collect requirement, how do you create a schedule, things like that. The question type which I mentioned earlier are true and false questions. So you would have a big scenario, always ensure that there's going to be a big scenario. So you would have true and false here, radio buttons, uh, that's one type of question. Then we would have multi-select. Multi-select means there are check boxes and it says select two. So you, you should be able to select two only. Drag and drop kind of questions. These are also called hotspot questions. What is drag and drop question? So you might have, you know, um, on your screen, some kind of a diagram and then some um, other texts. So you need to drop them at the right place. So that's the drag and drop questions. Um, you would see them fairly somewhere around four to five kind of questions. Um, the matching questions, these are the questions which are typically for um, understanding your knowledge on the definitions. Um, so there would be some scenarios, what are you doing, and then some definitions. So what act is happening, which process is that, or what type of people are you talking about. So then you have to match. Um, with 2023, you're going to see a lot of matching questions. My student comes back and tell me that they have seen many matching questions of late. Um, again, my student comes back and tell me they have seen at least one fill in the blank question. Easy, 
out of 180 question one fill in the blank question but um, there are one one or two fill in the blank question here and there and most of the questions are single choice question what does it mean you would have scenario and then radio buttons um, here you would select the one which is most applicable or most um, most correct the other question which I get a lot is what is um, the PMP exam is changed uh, which is 2021 so is the exam based on PM box 7 the answer is no there is something it used to be okay it used to be uh, based on PM box before 2021 but after PM box 7 coming up which is primarily as I told you um, had shrunk down and focuses on many things and does not have a deep dive so um, there are many reference material which you need to look at if you have to do uh, study yourself um, you know for PMP exam if you are thinking of going with an instructor the instructor gonna provide you the study material based on something called eco what is eco eco is PMP exam content outline so if you search if you go to pmi.org and click on PMP exam here you're gonna see um, you know all your details why should you do PMP things like that and then eligibility so check your eligibility and the cost um, in your region and here you're gonna see eco so you should be able to download it for your reference here I've downloaded it for you um, if you go with this this is something which we discussed in the previous slides and it talks about about half of the exam will represent predictive project management approaches and other half will represent agile or hybrid approaches so how do you do schedule management in agile if you do at all and how do you do schedule estimation control and management in predictive so both of these you should be able to know um, so PM box 7 does not cover that PM box 6 covers how do you control schedule uh, and that's the reason it's very important for you to understand the concept from eco so if you look at eco um, here you should know how to manage conflict lead a team blah 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 and come back and see process how do you manage communication risk stakeholder budget and resources schedule as I was talking about scope um, so it talks about most of the things specifically the process part talks about most of the things which are in PM box 6 so let me come back so PM box 6 become very important if you are not going with an instructor or if you are doing self-study PM box 7 is also important because P PMI has off late started introducing questions from PM box 7 so the more we move towards next year the more um, in 2023 you're gonna see more processes or more questions coming from various models which you see in PM box 7 um, as a, I told you that you would see a lot of questions primarily from agile and disciplined agile and hybrid methodology so reading agile standard which is again governed by PMI is important and you should also know how do we manage people as a people person as a project manager it's very important for the manager to um, manage people understand people management is 42 percent and it takes whole lot of your time because as a project manager I am dependent on the people I work with so let's look at the PMP questions um, you know which is gradually changing in 2023 so um, before 2023 80% of the questions used to be single choice question when I say single choice questions so you would have a scenario and then there are radio buttons but now single choice questions are getting reduced um, so earlier my you know when I did my exam I had questions which are two questions of two answer very similar and then certain fillers 
Now you are going to see a very different pattern wherein you would have all four answers in a different um, scenario talking about different things. So um, single choices are getting reduced and getting changed. The multiple choice um, which used to be you know earlier 15 percent or so you're going to see them increasing somewhere around 20 to 40 percent in some people because these are mix of questions which you're going to get so the multiple choice which are mostly agile artifacts agile events and all of that you would have to select two or three and the options are given to you so this you're going to see more what I also hear from my student, the feedback which I constantly receive, is there are many mix and match questions. So you would have question um, here, some definitions and some, uh, you know, act or task, etc. And then we have to mix and match the work with those um, processes or task or definitions. So you would see many mix and match questions. Um, those are the changes which you're going to see. The kind of questions which you will see are also changing. The kind of questions which you would see um, mostly come from Agile nowadays and now they are moving toward PM Box 7. Um, if I talk about the uh, material which I teach and PMI has given a new material in 2023 um, which is which is more in line with the models which are written in PM Box 7, um, the way we execute project, um, irrespective of the methodology, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling. So uh, PMI has changed their reference material as well in 2023. Um, so change is constant, don't worry, change is going to happen. But it does not mean I change the way we execute project, the way we used to execute, the basic principles are same. So understand the concepts. That's very important for you to pass the exam. Have a lot of understanding on people management domain, specifically servant leadership. No PDCA, plan, do, check and act. This is something which I do all the time. We plan for things, we do work and we check and act. We apply that in hybrid, we apply that in predictive, we apply that in normal uh, agile processes. So we plan, we do, we check and act. That's the underlying principle for doing scope, for doing iteration, um, for scheduling, whatever you name it. So no PDCA, work and understand what is it in any context and try and understand getting the keywords. Um, any definition gonna have a keyword. So why are we doing it? Identify the keyword. If you know that you would be at a path to success for the PMP exam. How would you pass the exam? My recommendation would be attend a workshop. If you want to, if you are very uh, good in reading, you can go ahead and read PM Box 6, PM Box 7, Agile, the material which I told you earlier. Or if you don't want to go with that, attend a workshop, the, the PMP instructor, and attend a workshop which I PMI authorized. So you're going to get PMI authorized material to you so and this is based on eco you don't have to worry about you know how do i manage conflict which material should i see all of that is taken care of once you attend a workshop with a pmi atp so search for who are the pmi atp in your region and attend a workshop once you attend a workshop you get 35 pdus file for the pmp uh, application they would ask you for your eligibility, uh, suffice that. Start preparing for the PMP exam. Do a lot of questions. Do a lot of questions of the current style. I have seen people doing questions which are, you know, referring like PM Bog page number X talks about this particular methodology and hence this is right. Don't go with that because those questions are very old questions. Don't prepare with that material. Prepare with the new material and the correct material. 
once you start getting somewhere around 80% and above, then only schedule your exam. Exam can be scheduled at home or center. I have prepared a video as to where should you schedule your exam. To give you the short answer, go to a center because that way the responsibility of managing the entire exam, logistic, everything is with the center. So you just focus on giving the right answers and then pass the exam. That's how easy the entire journey to pass the PMP exam is. The next step is look for obviously the PMI ADPs and, uh, and roll for a workshop. In case you have any questions, you can talk to me at kavita at kavitasharma.net, um, send me an email or if you want to enroll for any workshop, go to kavitasharma.net. Um, let me know was this video helpful or not subscribe to my channel because I keep on adding more content on the uh, underlying principles thank you for listening in have a very nice day bye bye